Jay Clayton joining us, the chairman of the SEC here at the Hilton in New York. You just gave a very interesting speech. A good part of it was about the IPO market. It's been a big year for IPOs. We've seen big companies, Uber and Lyft, going public. But you've made it a little bit of a thing in your administration to try to make it easier for companies to go public. We all know many companies stay private too long. Mm -hmm. How can that be done while still providing disclosure to the public about what these companies are doing? Well, you, you hit the nail on the head, Bob. Are companies going public early in their life cycle, or are they going public very late after their growth phase has passed? And there was a time 20 years ago when companies sought growth capital in our public markets and our Main Street investors had, a, had an opportunity to participate in that growth phase. Today, we don't see that as much. And we are working in many ways to make our public capital markets more attractive to those growth stage companies. Jobs Act, this was a bipartisan uh, act of Congress, made it easier for companies to go public. We're expanding the Jobs Act. Um, what, I what I would say is the Jobs Act accommodations, they're smart ones. Congress thought about it. They did a good job. We're expanding those to more companies. We're looking at scaled disclosure. We're, we're basically looking to eliminate frictions without in any way reducing investor protection. Are we going to see less intensive 10K filings? Will be simpler? Will the filings for the companies be less intense, less information in them? I'm trying to figure out what's the, what's the balance. Well, well look, if you, if you have a fairly simple company, you should have a fairly simple 10K. And we want to make sure that people understand that, you know, multinational, you know, multi-line companies with different segments, they're going to have a, they're going to have a complicated 10K. But if you're, if you're an early stage company, you ought to be able to go public and talk to investors in the same way you talk to private investors. Let me move on to algorithms and the whole issue of machines doing trading. We, every time the Dow's down 600 points, somebody comes on our air and says, the machines have taken over. The algorithms are taking over. We know this is an exaggeration. It's people who write the algorithms. But it's a concern that our viewers have. Can, can you tell us, does the SEC have any concerns about how machine trading is being done? Are the rules being enforced? Is there any need to tighten the rules? What's the SEC doing, if anything, about well, I, this? I think, what, I think what viewers should understand, and, and sophisticated market participants understand this, almost all trading today, and I could say, I'll just say for all practical purposes, all trading today is machine trading. It's done through an algorithm. If you, if you go to your broker and say, I want 100 shares of this, or I want to sell 100 shares of that, it gets fed through an algorithm. And there are different types of algorithms. Now, to, now to give some comfort, we know that. Our rules have been adjusted. We are continuing to look at them to make sure that trading today is as fair and transparent as it was when it was voice trading. Um, in some ways, look, trading is much more efficient today than it was when it was all voice trading. So investors benefit from that. But, you know, I, like I always say to you, my job is to worry. I do want to make sure that our regulations today reflect the fact that we do have machines talking to each other. I want to bring in my colleague, Kelly Evans. Kelly? Thank you, Bob. And Chair Clayton, my question is about the Business Roundtable's recent proposal or, or shift to basically say we're going to emphasize stakeholder uh, uh, accountability and not just shareholder accountability for corporate America. Now, I mean, it's gotten a ton of attention, and I've seen criticism that by making that kind of move, you're basically you know, going from being accountable to shareholders to being accountable to, frankly, no one. Uh, are you worried this is going to be bad for investors in the long run? Uh, let me say this. I, I'm going to go back to what I did before I took this job uh, and had the opportunity to be in a lot of boardrooms. In the boardrooms of good companies, those constituencies were almost always front of mind because you couldn't deliver for your shareholders unless you were delivering for your customers and your employees. Now, the question about what the law should be around you know, who your duties um, are, that's a very complicated question. Uh, I'll just say that we've done very well um, leaving that to the states and not having the Securities and Exchange Commission get involved in the fiduciary duties. That's largely a Delaware law um, issue, and I'm happy to stay in my lane on the law of this. Yeah. Let me uh, ask you about Bitcoin. I know I've asked you many times about this in the last couple of years, but it's of, of intense interest to the viewers. Are we any further along on a Bitcoin ETF? I know you did a memo, you were in your staff a year and a half ago, where you made it very clear you were concerned about custody mm -hmm. uh, and the, the security of custody, and you were very concerned about the fact that much of the pricing of Bitcoin was done on foreign exchanges that had the potential to be easily manipulated. Now, your realm here is a Bitcoin ETF. Are we any closer? Or has, have the people involved in the Bitcoin businesses in any way come closer to satisfying your concerns? The short answer is 
Yes, but there's, there's work left to be done. Th those were not trivial questions. How do we know that we can custody and, and have a hold of these crypto assets? That's a key question. And an even harder question, given that, that they trade on largely unregulated exchanges, is how can we be sure that those prices aren't subject to significant manipulation? Now, progress is being made, but people needed to answer those hard questions for us to be comfortable that this was the appropriate type of product. Before we let you go, and Kelly might have one more question, I just want to get in the buyback question. Very interesting political question. There's been people on both sides of the political aisles who've weighed in on buybacks saying, some people are saying there's too many buybacks that are out there. Corporations are using them too excessively. They should be investing in their companies more. Does the SEC have a position on this? Is there any sign in buy buybacks are being abused? Is there anything that the SEC is looking at around this? Look, we, we don't regulate whether companies do or do not do buybacks. What we do regulate is if they decide to do them, are they appropriately disclosing them? And are they doing them in a way that's non-manipulative? Are they, are they doing it in a fair way? But whether a company does or does not do a buyback, that's not, that's not for the SEC to decide. You know, it, we appreciate all of your work, and we appreciate the fact that you make yourself available and explain what your position is. That's very helpful to all of us who cover these kinds of issues, Jay. Thanks very much for joining us.